Hello everybody, welcome, welcome. How's it going? Hopefully you guys are doing well today. Hopefully you guys are doing better than I am. Nothing bad happened on stream. We've not lost any time at all setting this up. So, if you're curious as to what is going on, and maybe you're just joining us now, or maybe you're on YouTube, what we're doing right now is something special. We're doing the community's hot takes. Now, about a week ago, I put out a request into the community asking, Hey, what are the hottest takes that you have regarding FGO? Now, I think that that is a much harder question than I initially anticipated, because the vast majority of people just responded with shit that's like, I don't know, obvious is maybe the best way to put it. Like, it, they mostly just responded with stuff that people wanted. Like, stuff that's not a hot take, it's stuff that is, uh, a lot of it was stuff like, hey, we should add auto farming, that's not a hot take, right? Uh, hey, we should do this, we should do that. It's just like, all of this stuff that is like, basic that most people want in the game. But, I have gone through the 262 responses that we received, I've read through all of them, and I have decided which ones are the hottest of the hot takes, and now, to assist me in reading these off, I do have an assistant with me, the aforementioned Tammy, who will be assisting us as we go through this endeavor, right? It's me. It's you. All right. So we are going to have her read off each of the hot takes, and then for your reading convenience, I will also be putting it into, I'll put it on screen as well. Let's get started, shall we? I think Fate Xie Gang Grand Order is a fun video game and I enjoyed the time I spent playing it. Weirdly enough, I do consider this to be a hot take. It feels like a lot of people who play Fate Grand Order really just don't enjoy what they're doing. It genuinely feels like so many people are just like, they, they're not enjoying themselves. So many people who play FGO, I feel like, are in this like weird limbo where they're trying to like justify the fact that they're still playing the game rather than actually enjoy the fact that they're playing the game. You know what I mean? But the story's good? Yeah, but most people don't like playing it. I feel like the most amount of people who I see talk about Fate Online are people who make comments like, I don't want to be playing this game. Why am I still playing this game? And you get chuckle fucks Yay! who talk about how they want the end of service of the game. Like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like that's weirdly enough a hot take. I think it's a fun video game, and I enjoy the time I spend playing it. I don't think there are many FTO hot takes. Everyone that plays the game knows the flaws, but the devs Xie Gang publisher never try to fix the worst of them since nobody really cares that parts of the game experience just suck. Also, I would like to see less sexy waifu servants and more cute or just beautiful waifus. So first of all, if you don't think there's FGO hot takes, why would you respond? Second of all, uh, everyone that plays the game knows the flaws, but the devs slash publishers never try to fix the worst of them, since nobody really cares that parts of that game experience just suck. That is not true. I think that is a hot take, because that is just factually incorrect. The quote-unquote worst parts of the game that you're referring to are probably how people farm, and also how, uh, like, I'd assume stuff like the coin system, right? I mean, I don't know. I, I don't personally have a problem with farming in this game. It's therapeutic to a degree. Alright, next hot take. The grinding is fun. You will be crucified for making that comment. Musashi is the best character in all of FGO. Fellas, how do you feel about that? Based. Wrong. Who? Cap. Can I go to the bathroom? Sit your fucking ass down. We just started. Should have pissed between classes. I like Musashi. I don't think she's the best character, though. That's a certainly a hot take. The fan base is kind of bad at reading between the lines and often needs things spelled out for them in order to fully register what someone is really trying to say. There's been way too many times where you're supposed to read through basic subtext. E. Someone being mean to someone they actually like, being nice but playing it half as for their own benefit, etc. And people are just completely missing the point. In other words, what Tammy is saying is that FGO fans are fucking stupid and don't know how to read beyond, like, a, the third grade level. This is not a hot take, this is a fact. I'm calling all of you out. The fact that I had to make a video about 
what the fuck happened with Bob, with Balvon Sheath in Lost Belt 6 because so many people were just so convinced that she's just a bad character and poorly written is astounding to me. In a in a not even a perfect world, in a literate world, I would never have to make that that video. It should just be a thing where you register, oh, they they spell it out pretty blatantly too. There is like very little in the, in the way of like subtext with that. It's very much laid out. But because it wasn't presented to you on your, like, fucking Zoo Pals plate with your sippy cup, a lot of people didn't get it. D this is not a hot take. This is, un this is an unfortunate statement of fact. I mean, I'm just gonna... Because this is going on YouTube, I will never miss a chance to dunk on the FSN crowd. Primarily because, for one, I'm happy for you guys because you will get to be able to play FSN on Steam here really, really soon. On the other hand, I'm happy that you're going to be able to play it for the very first time because you're a fucking liar who never actually read the fucking visual novel. I know you're not. I know that you haven't. I know that you've just seen Unlimited Blade Works and then lie. You're not fooling anybody. Moving on. Next hot take. Osaka Beer Meets Localization is actually good. The people who complain about it know shit of Japanese as Votolingo. The Japanese anime otaku stereotype is that they talk like samurais, ending their sentences with digozaru and always using more archaic kanar effects instead of the modern san, Hunan chan So, if you translate that in a literal way, people who isn't deep into Japanese culture, won't understand why she's talking like that despite not being a samurai. So that's actually... The cringy speak ticks are not instantly bad writing. Well, a lot of people just say that it's really, really bad writing. But yeah, so right now online, there's there's a big thing about uh, localization, right? Uh, lo a bunch of people who do translations and localizations are being put on the blast for pushing a narrative. Now, I, I did do some research into that, and the people who are actually like rewriting shit and pushing a bad narrative are all like that's not the majority that is a super 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 minority of people who are doing that but most people who are like just doing their localization job as best as they can are just getting cracked with it and we talked about this on a stream before like the four kids dub the japanese are the ones who were like hey write this shit in because otherwise people might not get it the japanese have the final say in like, at least with, like, the 4Kids shit, they had the final say in, like, what got localized for a lot of stuff. All of this is going off of, I believe, one one person who was a set on a board of chairman of the thing. So it could just be him just trying to save face. Who knows? Dude, the 4Kids One Piece has the best One Piece opening, and I'm not even going to hear any fucking arguments about that. What this person is essentially saying is that if you were to do a direct translation of how Osakabe Hime were to talk in Japanese to English, she would be going around talking like a Victorian, like, like a Victorian lady. Full sooth, we will go with to the mall and purchase uh, new pillywinkers and shit like that. Like, that's how she would be talking. Because she talks in archaic Japanese, which again, is how people like who are hyper hyper nerds talk. Another example of like how this would be if you want like, I don't know, just like another thing for reference would be watch Kobayashi's Maid Dragon. The way how, uh, I think his name's Takeda, it's the guy who rooms with F uh, Fafnir. It's the way how his, this way how that guy talks in his free time. Which, it, that doesn't translate well. You can't, you cannot translate it. I know my mic is crackling. I can't do anything about it. I apologize. I apolo I'm, I'm sorry. I know. I'm just going to let you know that I do know I can't fix it. Even if it is fucking cringe, and even if she does say the word poggers. You say poggers. Person who's bitching about it. I know you do. <laughs> you say you both you both use the words poggers and cringe. You are not above. You're not above this. Moving on, next hot take. Last belt R is the best one. Wrong. Next hot take. If you don't know what R is in Chinese, it's two. Hey Ankyo is the worst chapter. Half of it is just talking about how good the Ganji are. 
They wrote a character whose only character trait was to hate the Genji just so that she can say that the Genji are the coolest after fighting Kentucky for such seconds. The other half is done so losing fights to spiders and bombs or getting outwitted by librarians to show off how much Danzo sucks. Uh, I... Okay. I will not defend High and Kyo because I don't think that Hei and Kyo is a good chapter. It's a very mid-chapter, but it's certainly not the worst chapter. I definitely see where you're coming from. Hei and Kyo has a lot of stuff that's, like, missing or lacking in it, right? Hei and Kyo needs a certain, like, way for it to be written that it just doesn't get. I will say, I am a big fan of getting to, of, uh, getting to see Raiko in a different context. Like, seeing her work with Nursery Rhyme, of all people, which is really kind of interesting. So she gets to activate her mother mode. Like, the, the Babbage-Murasaki relationship is really cool. Getting to see Sei being, like, a non-full-on comedic role is really, really interesting. I will agree, they could have done Donzo better, because they really just didn't do anything with her. Kintoki is really cool. Suna is a wasted opportunity in that chapter. I feel like Suna, they, they really dropped the ball. The start of Hei and Kyo is really, really good, and then it just gets terrible. Like, the second half of Hei and Kyo is awful because it's just like, we're walking towards the tree, and everything is going to die. But because this is FGO, you know you're going to win anyway, so who gives a fuck? And they don't do much with it. I would say it's a lower tier chapter, but it's certainly not the worst. If somebody said Agartha exists, Agartha does exist. I would still argue Lost Belt 2 is worse than Hei and Kyo, though. Locusta is better than Nero. This post was made by Locusta Fan Club. True! Next hot take. Koanskai is a great example of the fake cancer past the original. I... If you mean in gameplay, certainly. If you mean in character, I disagree. I think the Tamamo as a character is better. I like Tamamo as a character better. Uh, Koyanskaya needed to be handled differently. The fact that I, I do I do like the subtext of Nasu being like, I like this character, but the way how I want to write her doesn't make any goddamn sense. Make her two characters. <laughs> Which is really funny. Tamamo as a stone is goaded. This was made by the Japanese people. She's free, by the way. The writing of F. Joe doesn't go all out. We could be having a lot more fun if events were more canon to the story, if the reality stuck after something happens, and we could actually see more growth from our main characters other than they are a good person whenever it's their time to shine. I'm stuck at now, so I'm not sure how it's going on JPBTW. Okay, so I'm actually... The reason why I pulled this one out of the people who are saying this is because they actually are doing a decent job of developing the main characters on JP. They're giving them actual, like, motivations and goals, which is really, really fun. They are like actually exploring them as a character is aside from just like oh this is who they are like this like the mahoyo event for Yay! example has a whole thing with that which is really really cool i don't disagree i think the issue with making them more concrete is then that makes the storyline way more of a pain in the ass to write it is kind of nice to just be able to throw them into the arctic and then just reference it as opposed to making that like hard canon should have given them character from the start. It feels tacked on at this point in the story. I don't disagree. The main character, as stated originally with FGO, is supposed to be someone who you can just slot yourself into. They're, they were originally written to be a self-insert. However, as FGO has grown, uh, people are now being like, well, we want to know more about who this person actually is. They're no longer self-inserting into the game. They actively are just like, well, who is this character? Which wasn't something that they had initially planned for. So they gave, they've now given them an official name, and they're slowly but surely eking out more stuff about them. And also, like, the entirety of uh, id, like, the ordeal, was that ordeal called two, is, that has to do with, like, the the home, like, the original home life, to a degree, of the Gudas. Like, they're, they're, they are exploring it more, and I'll say, I would say, I'm just gonna say better late than never with that, but I, I totally understand people being like, well, it, it feels, it, it feels too tacked on. I think it's okay to start fate with whatever you vibe with the most. 
The community always always fights about where to start, but in my opinion you can just start by the anime 斜杠 manga 斜杠 game that has the characters that interest you the most. It's really not that hard and everyone makes it seem so much more confusing than it actually is. True. So, this, I'm going to say that this is a hot take. This still counts as a hot take. Because a lot of people have a concrete like way to watch the fate, to watch and read through fate stuff. Like I'm, I'm sure there's a million and one posts across the internet about how to actually do it. I know it wasn't Gigak has a video about like how, like what the watch order is in reality, and I totally agree with this. Is like, I, for example, my first fate series that I got into was fucking Apocrypha. Apocrypha is is like, according to the community at large, really really bad. Most people do not like Fate Apocrypha. They think that it's boring. They think that the main uh, like character is really shit. I'm not going to disagree with that. I think Sieg is kind of whatever. He's not really meant to be like a full flesh character. But when Apocrypha hits, Apocrypha fucking hits. Like we we watched like the first six episodes of Apocrypha on stream a few months back, and it was hype as fuck. It was hype as fuck. That shit was awesome. And then yeah, after that I got into. Uh, after that, I watched. I didn't watch. I downloaded uh, FGO based on the recommendation of a friend of mine. Then I watched Fate Extra, and I still like Fate Ash, the the Fate Extra anime. I really like it, which is a very controversial opinion. But I genuinely like the Fate Extra anime. It's weird. It doesn't make any goddamn sense, but it's really fun to look at. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I didn't get into, I didn't, like, I watched then Fate Zero as my next anime, and then I watched the, uh, the various Stay Nights. And, I mean, if I told you what my rank, I've shown my rankings on what I think those are in the past, and I'm sure that it would make somebody's head explode. I'm not gonna go into that right now, but I totally agree with this. Find the one that you think is interesting. If there's one Fate thing that interests you, just read that. Have fun with it. If your thing is Fate, like, Strange Fake, read Strange Fake. If your thing is, like, I just like FGO and I really don't care for the rest of the stuff, just play FGO. If you're like, I think that Zero is amazing, then read read Zero and watch Zero. And then if you want to see more about those characters, you can find them. They're around. They should make a monthly pass for $5 that gives you E-Square every day like Genshin Welkin. Also, they should make male servants lose clothes with Ascension and flirt with you. Uh, so let's address that second part first. A lot of them do that already. There's already a decent amount of uh, servants that lose clothes with Ascensions. Um, uh, Roland! Uh, and a lot of them do flirt with you. A lot of them do. Uh... No, FGO does not, as a matter of fact, need a $5 fucking Genshin pass. Mostly because what you're saying is if you pay $5, you get one multi by the end of the month. I don't think that's enough to justify it. If they were going to add something like that, they would have to add something a little bit more to it. One quart a day ain't going to cut that shit. Reason SSR rates would kill the game. This was Tig's input. I'm putting Tig, mod Tig, that is TigZika, at TigZika on YouTube.com. Uh, you can find him there, subscribe to him. This was his hot take. There is no anonymity. Mods get him, they can't, he is the mods. Uh, and you know what? Here's the thing, chat. Uh, I agree. I kind of agree. He went, he, he loaded up Elden Ring. <laughs> he, he loaded up Elden Ring! <laughs> <laughs> it's my safe space. What traumatized life do you live where Elden Ring is your safe space? No, I, I agree to a certain degree. So, one of the things... Okay, I'm going to tell you guys a tale about one of my other early gacha games. The second gacha game I ever got into. Azure Lane. Now... I like Azure Lane. I have nothing bad to say about Azure Lane, aside from the fact that there is no lore. And the gameplay is kind of whatever, but the gameplay, I mean, I can see its, I can see its appeal. I have, aside from, like, the lack of lore, uh, I really like Azure Lane. One of the biggest issues with Azure Lane is the fact that, you, yes, you have a limited inventory, and they're very generous with their, with their units, and they release a... Oh god, they release a lot of them all at once. And so what you end up 
you end up in the situation where you have more units than you have space for and you can't do shit with it. And that's a major issue. The only way to get more inventory space up to a point is to spend real world money. And that is the only thing I ever spent money on Azure Lane for. It's a, it is a genuine, it's genuinely terrible. And that, that killed my enjoyment of the game. The entire point of the game is that I need to be able, I want to be able to like collect these waifus because they're really cute and then use them. Except I have too much room. I don't have enough room to store all of them. And so it just makes you feel like, well, fucking what's the fucking point? I'm going to give Tig, I called him out. I'm going to agree with him. If they, re if they raise SSR rates, mind you, it has to be to a certain point. If you raise them past a certain point, the entire game falls apart. Like, if you if you play Azure Lane in the comments, let me know. Because I, I like Azure Lane. Azure Lane was really cool. If you boot back up Azure Lane after not being there, you get a really, really sad and cute letter from... Uh, What's the name of the green-haired cat girl? I don't. It starts with an A. It's on the fucking tip of my tongue. She leaves you a letter and it makes you fucking want to cry. And then you play it and you're like, God damn it. God damn it. If Azure Lane wants to sponsor me, feel free to. I do like your game. Zig is actually an interesting character. Watching him learn about the positives and negatives of humanity is nice to see. It's not original because it is a standard robot learns humanity trope. But it's not boring. Stop calling my boy cardboard. Your son is made of cardboard. Your son is a foil for the plot. Your son is a... Your son is a foil to play off of. Now, I don't... I don't actually, I, I, I said it earlier, I don't actually hate Sieg. I just don't really find him as a very compelling main character. And it's because, I'm going to say this, it's not even just because he is a foil, even though he is. It's because every other character that is in the story is significantly more interesting than his generic side plot. That's his real issue. It has less to do with him as a person in his going, like, his story arc and all of that, and more to do with every other character being more interesting. So, I do believe that people calling C cardboard is not fair, necessarily. It's just that when you're in a crowd of heroes, the normal guy does not stand out. Uh, there is lore in Azure Lane, but it's hard to piece together. I, I did read this. Uh, it's scattered in the events where they are at the timetable. Uh, if you want to look into the lore, there's a channel for it that has uh, done giant lore and Azure Lane summaries. No, 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 no. I, I'd be more than happy to learn it because, again, I like Azure Lane. I think Azure Lane is really fun. I just... Genuinely, because I was unable to, like, do anything in the game because I had such... A, like, my inventory was so limited, I was just like, well, there's no point in continuing to play. So I just stopped. Most half Jill characters are not well written if written at all. How is a character well written if they are based off a fucking real person where they don't have to come up with literally anything? So, you had me in the first half, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you can, I think that there is an argument to be said that most characters in FGO are not well written because they're not expounded upon. There's a lot of potential for a lot of them that just goes completely, completely unchecked, right? There's so much stuff that they do with that they could do with characters that they don't, and it's entirely because it is to do with re it, because it's to do with uh, time constraints. You can't have a cast of over 400 characters and that is currently still growing and flesh all of them out evenly. It's just not possible. Where you've lost me completely is how is a character based on a real person able to be like done easy. You fucking lie. You write a story with them as the framework. <laughs> you don't do a one-to-one -one translation of who they were as a person. It's just that easy. You take the general concept of a person. Like, okay, Francis Drake in chat. That's a perfect example. You take the general concept of somebody like Francis Drake. Which is... Privateer turned pirate. Uh was in connection with Queen Elizabeth for a long time, circumnavigated the globe, uh, was, like, discovered California, maybe not discovered, but, like, was one of the first people to, like, land in California that was non-indigenous, 
and then you take that concept and you make it into something new. You take it and you're like, okay, what if instead that they swap places where Francis Drake and Queen Elizabeth I swap places and then she went off and had this thing. We're going to expound upon a conspiracy theory. And then you go from that and then you build off of that, right? There's a whole infinite level of possibilities that you can do with that. You just need to be creative. What this person really, what if, like, to not be insulting, but what this person kind of outed themselves as is I can't look beyond what is, I cannot look beyond what is already on the page to see the stars above the sky. Like, there's, there's a, there's a much vaster and more amazing world out there that you should go and explore. Try and train your creativity. Because you can take the concept of any one person. Like, think about how, like, people talk about, I don't know, their parents or their grandparents or their great-grandparents in your own life right now. Are they telling the complete and utter truth about them? Absolutely not. We lie about people who we know all the time to a degree to make for a better story. Why could they not do that with people of history as well? Oh, that was a, that was a spicy one, and I completely disagree with everything that they said. Reed Soaker is a good MC. People who don't see that just can't comprehend their character. Are there FSN fans? So this is certainly a hot take. We were talking about this earlier. I'm not going to say that Ritsuka... Okay, in FGO, the mobile game, I don't think that Ritsuka is a good MC. Mostly just because he, again, as we stated before, up until like th this year and a little bit earlier, like up until about a year ago, he was meant to just be more or less a self-insert. I'm going to say Lost Belt 6 is, where the, is the first time they actually played around with Ritsuka being not just like a self-insert character. Because there's a whole scene in Lost Belt 6 that you don't have control over where the character thinks for themselves, right? That's the first inkling that they are their own character. And I don't, again, I don't fully disagree with, like, what people have been saying in chat, which is that if they wanted them to be their own character, they should have done that from the start. And I can promise you, I am not an FSN fan. And I do comprehend their character. I think that Ritsuka can become a very good character. I think Ritsuka has the framework to be a very, very good character in the game. I think that that needs to be built upon more before we can actually say that, they're, that they are a good character. I will say, how they are portrayed in other media that's not FGO the game, they are much better written. Because they are the author is given more creative freedom with how they want to handle the character, right? And so in things like the Shimosa manga, or fuck, I mean, I just said manga like that, huh? Manga! In the Shimosa manga, I let my country slip out, goddamn. Or in Salem. Like, the way how they handle the main character there is really, really nice. Like, they actually take the time to give them their own character arcs and whatnot, and to grow and act in a way that's kind of fun, right? In those contexts, they're really good. Like, Ritsuka in the Seraph manga is really, really cool. I really like how it's how they are portrayed in the Seraph manga, because they give them a whole personality. Mind you, I think that's just that one author is really, really good at that shit. Also, yeah, people really like the Shinjuku one. I've not read the Shinjuku one, so I don't have any context for it. Yeah, the, the Epic of Remnant mangas are doing those characters a lot of justice. And whether you want to consider them canon or not, that's that's up to you. If we're just talking the games, I disagree with you. If we're talking uh, things outside of the games, I do agree with you. Simple as. There is no bigger fraud than Arthur Pan Dragon. And then Fate Xie Gang Proto is just a made up story, so we believe he is chasing a beast while in reality he is running around like a bum. That this one is unfortunately true. What is Arthur fucking doing? <laughs> that motherfucker spent so much time doing fuck all. Didn't he fought the beast in arcade? Did he actually get around to it? I don't think that he did. No, he fought the wrong one. Isn't that what it is in arcade? Didn't he kill the wrong beast in arcade? Like, it wasn't even the one that he's hunting. He's still fucking around. Now, I will say... People are speculating that the most recent character, one who may or may not be on stream right now, uh, is the beast that he's supposedly hunting because she's super giant. And so there's actually Arthur Tech to kill her in his kit. Whether you believe that or not, wait, what beast number is she? Couldn't tell you. 
Asgo is the best nice universe history, and it has the best characters. Chad, how do you feel about that one? FGO has the is the best Nasuverse history, and it has the best characters. I'm seeing a good half and half of trues and wrongs, and most of the people who are saying that it's wrong are saying that Mahoyo is better or KNK is better. What the fuck is a Grand Beast? It, there's two of them on your screen right now. Uh, I think that in terms of the, in terms of characters, I will say. I mean, okay, from the Fate series that I've ingested, I will say FGO has the best characters in it, mostly because it it would be impossible for it not to. It also has some of the worst characters in it. The cast is so wide that it's bound to have both the best and the worst. Is it the best Nasuverse history? I would need to I, I need to read Mahoya before I make that that claim. Uh, I like I like Karno Kyokai decently well. Karno Kyokai is really fun. Uh, I'm just gonna let the comments fight about this one. Uh, yell at yell at yell at each other in the comments. I have, I, I'm just gonna go full like centrist on this. I have no opinion. Muramasa sucks. People who just think he's Yay! good because the bar was really low. Damn. I mean, I don't think that he sucks. I don't. I also just don't think that he's this like god character people make him out to be. I think that he's totally fine. In terms of being like an Emia face, he's probably the best one. I will not say that he sucks, though, but I know a lot of people really like him. But ask yourself this question, chat, and YouTube comments. Do you like him because of his character, or do you like him because he looks like your red-headed cuck boy? Would you believe me if I said that wasn't my mic and this is just my voice getting more and more tired? Being short and xiegang or flat doesn't inherently make a servant a child or a lolly. All I'm gonna say? <clears throat> I tell this story every time this conversation is brought up. It's the only thing I'm going to say on the matter. I live in Japan, guys. I work with Japanese people. I know it's a crazy thing to think that Japanese people are not like these mythological creatures that like roam on like a separate planet. But if you would go outside of your house and look away from your computer screen, you might believe that Japanese people are real. And in that context, being someone who works and lives in Japan, what you will find is that there are people who are just really, really fucking short. One of my coworkers, who's close to me in age, when I first met her, I thought that she was a student because she's like four foot nine. I thought that she she's shorter than the kids who she's teaching. Genuinely. People like Melusine, people that are like the height of Melusine and the build of Melusine that are adults exist. I know it's a hard thing to wrap your brain around if you live in a country where people by nature are just taller, but in Japan, people like that are real. Those are real people. I, I see them all the time. Grown adults who are shorter than the average American child. That's all I'm gonna say. Maybe you need to move away from this presumed self-righteousness that you have about calling people pedophiles online when in reality you don't actually know shit from Shinola. And a final remark on this, for those people in particular, uh, Loli Porn has too many views. Some of you are lying. Some of you are lying. Pray for the man who is a self-righteous prick on Reddit about Loli's that his internet search history never gets leaked. Next hot take. The gacha system in FGO is superior to about 90 of other gacha games because of how high its rate up is. Getting spooked by non-rate up stars is a lot rarer in FGO than games like Genshin, Fire Emblem Heroes, Pokemon Masters, etc. Red buzzer, red buzzer sound is really funny. Uh, I don't agree with this. Yeah, Counterpoint Nikkei is exactly what I was going to say. Nikkei has the best gotcha system. It does. Nikkei's gotcha system is the, is the 10% in this case. Uh, no, FGO's gotcha system is very, very rough in a lot of ways. I will say, there is one thing that FGO does better than every other gotcha game. There is exactly one thing that FGO is the king of with gotcha. And that is making it so that rolling it is fun. FGO is the only game 
that I like to stream Gotcha 4 because of how they have the system set up where you can get spooked, you have sparks, you have rainbows, you have special animations for certain characters. How they reveal what you're going to get is something that no other gacha game does as well. The rules are cheaper than other gacha games I play, that too. Like, you also get, like, surprisingly, you get a decent bang for your buck. If we're talking exclusively the gacha system, that is the one thing I will say that FGO has above every other gacha game. There is nothing like watching a servant spark in FGO. Watching a servant in FGO spark after you thought that you just missed is such an amazing feeling. Seeing a rainbow explode out of your gotcha when you don't expect it to, because FGO gives you no indication at the start what you're going to get, and a lot of gotcha games do. The vast majority of gotcha games will let you know, hey, you're going to get a 5 star or a 6 star this time. FGO is just like, fuck it, you ball. You're in it and you're rolling it and this is what you're doing. And I love that. It's such a, it's such an entertaining way to roll the to spin the wheel. They do it best in terms of in terms of presentation. FGO does it best. The actual system itself is still kind of ass though. <laughs> okay, it's shit gameplay wise, and the people overrated her too much. Uh, level 100 MP5 Alco have her here. This guy stinks. <laughs> the the Ibuki Angie. Yeah, Otto, how do you feel about that? You're a gameplay guy. I trust your opinions. From what I remember, Alka was very, very good. Do I think that she's overrated? Maybe a little bit, but not by much. She's really, really strong. <laughs> I think that this is an opinion born of someone who was hoping that they were going to be like a Castoria killer. Or who doesn't understand how to use her, because she is very complex. I get why people dislike her. That's fair. Yeah, th th this does reek of farming brain rot a little bit. AoE Buster and extra attacks cannot be dog. It can be with the with damage stuff, but I think that Alco is a very important servant to FGO because she opens the doors for a lot of new potential gameplay stuff. Uh, she has to NP one extra time, but she's crazy after that. I mean, FGO just fucking hands out NP charges at this point. May as well. Servants are the least interesting part of fate. The series as a whole is at its most interesting when focused on the regular humans with the heroic spirits used as a mirror for some part of their arc and or characterization. I understand what you are saying, but you're wrong. <laughs> I, I, I totally understand what they're getting at, and I totally understand what they're attempting to say. I just do not agree with it. This is like a an IGN story review take, if that makes sense. FSN's fans spotted, pretty much. I apologize I'm comparing your take as a fucking IGN story review, but it does read like that. Because IGN has a tendency to take the least interesting part of a story and highlight it as the most interesting part of the story because of a failure to understand why the story works as a whole. Yeah, bro, my favorite part of Lost Belt 2 and Lost Belt 4 was the sad little girls. I mean, for Lost Belt 2, yes, actually. For Lost Belt 4, no, actually. <laughs> the human characters are not supposed to be the foil for the heroics. Sorry, the heroic spirits are not meant to be the reflections of the humans. It's the other way around. It's how the humans interact with the heroic spirits, and seeing these beings that are supposed to be stagnant, non-changing because of their nature, learn and grow and change, and overcome previous flaws and the things like that, through the assistance of the human characters, that is the actual interesting part of the story. Like, the humans are a, f are a stepping stone in making the heroic spirits shine. Like, would you really give a fuck about Saber's story? If not for M if not for like Emia assisting her in like learning what it actually means to be a true king. And like teaching her like, okay, you don't you don't you can you're allowed to just be yourself. You can just be yourself. You don't need to meet anybody's expectations. You can just be you can be Arthur. You don't have to be King Arthur. The Vinci is really damn annoying sometimes. She won't shut the fuck up when I go to the shop or to enhance my servants and I wish there was an option to shut her up so I can go do my thing in his. Are you guys just completely unaware that there is a mute option 
in the game, you can just disable voice line. I hate Mesh. Every time she's in the story, I skip her dialogue. My favorite story with Mesh is Pound Liu where she wasn't Mesh. Okay, maybe not hate, like Morgan, but I still dislike her heavily. Hi, Babylon Knight, how's it going? I could have sworn this was Babylon Knight. I could have sworn it was, and I'd like to personally apologize to you, Babylon. I didn't know your game. Is this bait? No, there's a lot of actual genuine mash hate in the game. I don't understand it. I am the CEO of not liking mash. Yeah, so I, I do apologize. What is happening? Why do people hate mash? People hate mash because she's generic, and she's the forced love interest in the game to a degree. Now, I can go into why I think that that's, like, wrong. I can certainly go into why I, like, how MASH has grown as a character over time. It's just not something that's, like, directly thrown at you. But because you spent... It's the, it's the frog in the boiling pot thing, which is where you spend so much time with this thing in this situation that you just kind of don't realize that it's happening. But then you look back and you go back like, oh, gosh, yeah, it's actually changed a lot. Holy shit. Bad take. I love MASH. Fuck you. <laughs> People treat F Joe like it takes Nasu's time and attention away from writing visual novels like Red Garden or Mahoy or when I really think at this point we should be treating F Joe as a visual novel that he should also be spending plenty of time on because it is one. The story is incredible and it keeps on going. I'd rather indefinite high quality FGO visual novel storytelling than FGO without Nasu involved and less general quality, even if that means a longer wait on no visual novel releases. I. I. I say this as a massive Tsukihime and Mahoyo fan. You wanted a hot take? There you go. Yeah, we have already gone over this. Uh, already. But, you know, again, it's it's worth repeating. Uh, people need to just understand, no, this is not... Nasu is not being forced to make FGO. He makes it because he likes it. We found... We did find the evidence. I had one guy come in here... <laughs> come in here yesterday and be like, oh, the, the people just make that stuff up. You don't... Like, that's not real. I, I couldn't find it when I looked it up, so clearly you're not telling the truth. I'm like, okay, well... And then after after somebody did find it, he was no longer here. Just like, well, okay, there we go. I believe that was the 2023 anniversary interview, if you are interested. <laughs> Little controversial would say it, but yeah, I I I'd have to agree. I think I gotta agree with her on that one, fellas. Highly nuanced, very good opinion. I think it's okay to burn servants you don't like. Not everyone has to do it, but hey, you get your fifth Aziz Pukan Donna blow some steam. Burn IT. I mean, it's your Chaldea, you can do whatever the fuck that you want. I'm not gonna tell you what you can and cannot do. I personally think that you're a fucking idiot if you do it. I'll think I will call you an idiot right to your face. It's a waste of a perfectly good servant, even if you're not going to use them. You can still get resources out of them because of how the game is and how it evolves. Like, like for example, even if I got Gilgamesh Archer, who I don't have and never will roll for, I will never... I'm not going to burn him just on the basis of him being Gilgamesh Archer. Praise Melee would be peak fit if it didn't focus so much on lolly shit. Magical Girl Lilia's will is such a genius idea. Why is she a th grader? Uh, she's a fifth grader because a lot of Magical Girl shit is focused on children. That's why. But I, uh, I actually agree with this. I have said before, and I'll say it again. Uh, Prisma Ilia has the most interesting fate concept of any of the works. The class card system is a legitimately fascinating idea to play around with. And yet it focuses, at least the anime, I've been told the manga is different. The anime focuses so much on children making out. 
Uh, where's the magical woman genre? Might I recommend to you Gushing Over Magical Girls? It's a really, really horny show and it's really fun. Dead weeks are good and I'm glad when they happen. Especially for those who actually got a family and a job. Dead weeks are a blessing. This man just said that a lot of you have no life. <laughs> <coughs> Homie really just said, A lot of you guys don't have a life and focus too much on the goddamn game. Dead Weeks are actually good because some of us actually have a life outside of a mobile game. <laughs> is he wrong? No. In fact, this is the most frigid take of the night. This man is 100% correct. Exonerate him. Give him the crown. May he wear the horns of the goat man. You're absolutely right. Sometimes it's nice to be able to just relax and not worry about FGL. Like, as somebody who plays JP and NA, having a dead week on one of them while the other one has something going is really nice. It's whenever shit happens where there's like two big events that are really interesting is happening, you have to make the decision, now what are you gonna do between the two of them? Or alternatively, if you just like, are like, I just wanna focus on something else. I have these other things in my life I wanna do, I don't have to worry about having to read through the new event. It's nice. Yeah, let you get, especially now, you get to make your bronze saplings. Great take. You're not, this is not a hot take. You're just correct. That the Heavens Feel movies were actually really good and that Type Moon fans will never be happy with any adaptation ever. Uh, I agree with the second part. I disagree with the first part. I think that the Heavens Feel movies were, the animations were very, very nice. The fights are really, really nice. Uh... It's just kind of not a good story, so it's hard to adapt. But the second part is absolutely correct in that Tight Moon fans will never be happy with any adaptation ever made, ever. They're never going to like it. They're never going to like it. Because they're ne it's going to be completely impossible for them to take the 100% accurate transcript of the visual novel that these Fate fans treat like the Bible and make it one-to-one. -one. It's just never gonna happen. If you want that to happen, make a fan project. Get off your fucking ass and do it yourself. <laughs> Learn to animate. Hire voice actors. Make the story you want to see. That's how shit gets done. It's hard to adapt one-to-one. -one. It's hard to one-to-one -to -one adapt novels. I'm aware. Believe me, I'm fully aware that they're never happy. Tight Moon fans are consistently angry about anything and get sued by Nasu. I don't think, Nasu's the kind of motherfucker that if somebody does that, they'd be like, he'd be like, holy shit, can I throw money at you? <laughs> Let's get political. Fate has a more LGBT plus characters than people mention. Like there's a good chunk that legit only like the same gender. Also true. I'm aware about the mic issues. I can't do anything about it. <clears throat> so this is a slight at both the LGBT community as well as the anti-LGBT community. I'm just going to call out human beings for acting badly. And that is that there is a decent amount of LGBT representation in Fate. There's a lot of it. It's just not as out there directly in your face as certain groups of people want it to be. They're just more subtle about it most of the time. And instead of addressing it like directly, which is, I mean, I don't know, maybe keep in mind that in Japan, uh, addressing things of this topic is a little bit more iffy than it is in the in places like America or a lot of European countries. And so you have to be at least a little bit subversive with how you include it. But they do include it. Like, for example, Maeve, for instance, is very openly bisexual. Or alternatively, uh, fucking Carmilla, very, 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 very clearly homosexual. Uh, Astolfo, very bisexual. Zhu Fu. Yeah, come on, keep keep throwing the names at me, chat. I know you know all of them. Fate makes it feel normal most of the time. Exactly. I think that I think that that's the thing. Is that fate makes it makes a lot of people who are homosexual, or bisexual, or transgender, just act like normal people. They don't make it their entire personality. You don't need to write a gay character to be a character who is covered in fucking rainbows and shouts from the mountaintops that they only like to kiss dudes or that they only like to kiss girls. My voice is leaving me. 
yeah, it's they they handle that shit that shit super well. It's just that because it's not immediately in your face, it lets people point and say there is no representation, or it lets people point and say that well there there's too much rep there's not enough representation. It's either there's none or there's not enough, or for some people it's like well they didn't need to do this. It's just like well if your character's only trait is their sexuality, they suck. True, genuinely true. I mean, but then you can have characters like Zhu Fu. Zhu Fu is a tragic is a tragic lesbian who loves one female who is never going to love her back. And while the aspects of Zhu Fu's character that are that she likes uh, fucking consort Yu to an absolutely unhealthy degree are there, she is a character aside from that. And she's a very endearing and fun character aside from that. She's a very well-written character aside from that one point. I think that when people say that there is not enough representation, what they mean is that they want somebody who is out there who is just like full on, like it, they want a dude to come on stage and just go, I fuck dudes. Clip that, clip farm that, I fuck dudes. I only fuck men, and I will only continue to fuck men. Mind you, that's a thing that exists. You know who? It, you know who that is? You, do you know who that is? That is motherfucking. Not a. That's not a male. It's a female. That's Mary Anning. Mary Anning is aggressively lesbian. She has an entire line about how she can move her fingers to make women come. So you know, it's there. These characters are there. Also, Pepe is very gay. Pepe is very gay. Aggressive. <laughs> Aggressive's crazy. <laughs> yeah, games that make characters be just the gay one, it, it is more offensive. Like, I don't know. I'm not a homosexual man or a bisexual man for that matter. I can't really say one way or the un one way or another, like what can be viewed as offensive by people who are of those leanings. Natural stupidity will always overcome any challenge quest. Bazaar in the game, signed by Carbon. This is true. I've proven this, especially with like when we fought the CEO of Water in a lot of those fights. If you were just like, I think I can oonga boonga my fucking way through this, a lot of times if you just keep doing it, you'll actually be able to solve the problem. Hong Liu and its cast aren't that great and it's a shame that many fans seem to be fans of literally only Pound Liu. I think that, okay, I agree with the second half. I think that there is, I think that if you're only a fan of Lost Belt 6 and you think the rest of FGO's story sucks, then you are just kind of an idiot. If you think the cast of Lost Belt 6 sucks, I also think that you're an idiot and are unable to read. Lost Belt 6 is one of those things that got too popular because people now hate it just because it's the big one. People are, are upset that it's a huge story that requires you to actually have reading comprehension. A lot of the characters in Lost Belt 6 have motivations outside of just uh, what is being presented immediately in front of you. And you have to remember the interpersonal character relationships that are presented to you in Lost Belt 6. And if you don't do that, then it comes off as bland and boring. And being like, well, what the fuck was all of this for? Like, why is Oberon acting like this? I already know he's the bad guy because I saw a picture of him uh, two years ago on FGO JP. I already know he's the villain, so what's it matter? And shit like that. It's just, I don't know. It's it's so interesting to see. You know what, maybe here, here's an interesting analogy. Fate... FGO in particular is maybe the world's largest book club where we have a group of people who get together and read the same story and then share that story that story share that story with each other and what they thought about it. The issue with having such a wide amount of people is that you get a lot of people who aren't who very much took their literature classes for granted and believe that sometimes, believe not just sometimes, but all of the times that the curtains are just blue, if you understand that reference. That everything that is presented to you immediately is as it is, and that there's nothing more to it. Which is not true for the vast, like, if you're a writer who fully just presents everything as blatant, and with no meaning behind it, you're a piss poor writer. I agree with your second half, I firmly disagree with your first half. As an English grad, I hate the, the curtains meme. Exactly. Trust me, I, as an English teacher, 
it's infuriating. But there's nothing more to this. It's like, you're right. Sometimes a curtain is just a curtain. Sometimes it's not. That's the difference between reading and understanding. Writer is more than just big poopa artist. He actually has a range of male and female types he can draw. This is a divisive one for a lot of people, especially given that this was uh, this form came out when uh, Summary Buki was first airing. Uh, I, I do believe that this is true. It, so, Raida's biggest flaw as an author, an author, an artist, is that he enjoys massive, I'm talking like disturbingly sized melons glued onto tiny women. Like thin, long, not not tall, long women. That's his fetish. That is his number one fetish. And when you let him go completely unfiltered, he will make that over and over again. And saying that you dislike that is completely valid. It's your own choice. Me, I don't mind it as much. But other people are like, uh, I, this isn't my thing. But to throw out everything else that he does, like Moriarty, for example, is a great exa is like a great character. Uh, fucking his work on games aside from FGO is all very very strong. Like I would even say Shuten. Shuten is one of the most iconic designs in FGO. So many people love Shuten's design. He is a very very talented artist. It's just he needs to kind of be reined in. So yeah, I I, I agree with this take, but I'm sure people have opinions. Scary. Air Ashkigao doesn't need a swimsuit form. A hell of in form on the other hand would be peak. I got bad news for you, submitter. Chat member. I th <laughs> You may have gotten both. You may have- this person may have inadvertently pr like predicted both. Because she doesn't just have a swimsuit form. Saber Wars is a Halloween event. So she did get a Halloween form. They actually- this guy actually called it. Apollo and his gift of prophecy strike again! They did. Shout out to this guy. I, I don't disagree, I kind of would- I, I- she got both. She wins. With all the build-up about Agatha being the worst singularity, it was fine. I have an entire video about why I disagree with this. Go watch it, it'll be linked somewhere. The community is too strict on what they consider a good unit. Most consider farming the top priority and disregard anything else. Others will over-examine the unit to the point of nitpicking them. Yeah, no, this is true. This is absolutely true. This is 100% correct. The FGO, FGO as a community is terrible when it comes to uh, looking at a servant. How often is it when a servant launches and if they are unable to loop with Castoria or Koyan of Light, are they immediately just said to be a bad servant? How many times is that the exact case? Can't three turn? Garbage. I want you to reach into your ear and pluck out the nerves that are attaching that connection in your brain because fucking think fast, Chuckle Nuts. We're getting into a brand new form of farming called multicore. Lots of great content creators to talk about that shit. This, the three turn brain rot is not going to work forever, but saving? Saving is not no okay you're 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 no bad. <laughs> you can save for whatever character that you want, but like the community will find any flaw in a character just to make it so that they can tear them apart. Like I don't know, think of a character like somebody said Cuckoo. Cuckoo's a great example. People fucking hated Cuckoo on her release. Like, she's bad, she's unusable, you can't really use her on a lot of shit, whatever, and then, like, give it a couple of months and boom, she's one of the most beloved servants on the entire fucking platform. Yeah, shout out to Constantine, whose kit was never awful. Fuck you mean she's broken? People didn't like her. People did not like Cuckoo on release. Because her kit's complicated. Oh, you're never gonna have that many stars on the field, it's not gonna work, you can't use all of her extra stuff, That you have to spend stars to get something? What the fuck? I do not see uh, those people who show on servants for not being able to loop. You are not deep enough into the community, and I... I envy you. I, I think that the community is far too harsh on most servants. Like, a lot of characters have a niche, and it's really fun to make certain characters work, just because it is fun. 
to do something that's not the same. You have a cast of 400 characters if you are willingly pigeonholing yourself. Okay, I'm going to bring up something. You have a cast of 400 characters, and all 400 of them are usable in at least one context of the game. And all 400 of them can be made to work. Every single one. That is unheard of in the vast majority of gacha games. And so willingly pigeonholing yourself into being like, I'm only going to use things that can loop with... Ex no, Jekyll got a great buff. Jekyll's buff makes him usable. He just doesn't have an NP. He's just now a very good beat stick. Jekyll is an actual usable servant. So is Phantom. Geron well... <laughs> My poor boy, Geronimo. <laughs> Geronimo's NP is actually really good. So if you can get his NP to work, like, for a three-star unit, that's the best part about him. So he actually has some utility with that. Yeah, I don't know. If you're still stuck in the idea that a character needs to be able to loop, again, I've said this about other things in this list, but if that's genuinely your, your belief, then maybe stop playing the game. You're clearly not enjoying yourself. You have 400 plus characters and you choose to use only 15 of them. What the hell's wrong with you? Next up. Quick is the best card type and Koyan Light needs a buff since she's objectively worse than Castoria and Scuddy. It's moments like these I wish Plushie was in the chat because I want to see him continue to go nuclear as he has. Cool. Yeah, th this is absolutely bait, yes. This is very much bait. Koyan is... Uh, one of the... Uh, like, as an all-around servant, Koyan is... Pro is really really strong because she's both a dps and a support you can use koyan with herself stop hydrating me god damn it no yeah no koyan's koyan's kit's good this is this is very much bait shiro is just as much as self-insert as reed suka i'm saying leave fuck you damn let them cook lol no are you okay this isn't my take i didn't make this take I didn't write this take, I should say. This take is not it. Yeah, no, fuck you whoever did this one. Damn, I don't care for Face Day Night, and even I know this is wrong. Who? Sneed. So, okay. Hard disagree. There are actual defining servants in Shiro's life that influences decisions in the game. Yeah, so let's talk about this. I am, I am guilty of saying that Shiro is a self-insert character. And I will say, I still stand by that statement. I do believe that, that Shiro Emiya is a self-insert character. He's a power fantasy character, much in the same way that every other shonen protagonist is. Just like how Naruto is, just like how fucking uh, Midoriya is, to a degree just like how Tanjiro is, all of those characters serve that same purpose. Did I write that take? Shockingly no, and I Ichigo is another one, yeah. Like, shockingly no, and I would own up to it because I have no shame about my dislike for Emiya, right? I would let you know if I was doing this. I, none of these are my own takes. All of those characters are meant to serve the essentially the same role Yay! of being a power fantasy for the reader. And they hold pretty basic, good, morally good values that you can latch on to and admire. And for that reason, they are self-insert characters. They're characters that are easy to insert your own values onto, assuming you're not some massive scumbag. Where I disagree with you is with the as much of a self-insert as Ritsuka. Because Emiya actually has character traits built into him that influence part of who his character actually is. Ritsuka, as we've discussed already in this fucking stream multiple times, doesn't have any of that until so much later into the chapter when they finally decide to build him as a character. So, while I agree that Shiro is a self-insert, which is probably a crime to some people, I don't believe he's as much of a self-insert as Ritsuka is. Being relatable is different from being a self-insert. It is, except that these are characters who are designed specifically for you, for you to be able to place your own values and intent onto them. And then, of course, you know, just how visual novels work with you playing a, the main character. You do have an influence on what they do. Wouldn't any protagonist be a self-insert then? Isn't there a point... Isn't the point of a protagonist to insert yourself into their perspective? To a degree, it's all dependent on how you handle it. Uh, a lot of stories, like... You need a character to have very, very strong defining traits about themselves that you, as the reader, cannot actually latch on to. It's like, oh, I understand what this is like. That, all, that are mixed in with aspects that make them relatable. 
when I call them out for being shonen protagonists, it's because most shonen protagonists have the like same origin story that is their defining thing. Most shonen protagonists come from some form of tragedy in their life that influences them onto why they do good. Right? Like, if we're going to take the examples that we had, like, uh, Midoriya never got his quirk and he was bullied for it for his entire life, and also his dad wasn't in the picture. Naruto was treated as an outcast for his entire life because of the demon that was inside of him. Fucking Tanjiro's entire family was killed in front of him, essentially. And Emiya survives the Fuyuki incident of the Holy Grail War. Like, all of those are the tragedies that, like, these characters survived, and that's the thing that separates them from you, normally. Gen generally, they don't expand much more outside of that into things that differentiate them, which is the issue. Meanwhile, if we're going to just take, like, another character, a non-manga character who's a protagonist, who you do not relate with at all, aside from just, like, some of his morality, take Guts from Berserk. That's a non-shonen protagonist who you, I, God, I hope you don't relate to him <laughs> on certain, on certain levels. I was born as a Filipino. Their tragedies ain't shit. <coughs> I, I, I hope that that, that what I'm saying is coming across as being understood. I don't know. It's why I don't like shonen is because the vast majority of the main characters are the same character with a different coat of paint. And Emiya Shiro, in my mind, is no different than that. With with protagonists, then I guess they're supposed to be either relatable or empathetic. I mean, most of them just tend to be. I want care like a good protagonist is one who's dynamic, has a lot going on with them, outside of just the very very clear like this is who like I don't know like the like I, I'm the every man that everyone likes, and for some reason girls want to suck my cock all the time. Hi, my name's Emmy Ishiro. Girls like me because I'm just nice. Will this become a video? Yes. Speaking of, that's the end of these. I'm done talking about this. It is all it is way past my bedtime. Fellas, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. If you're watching this over on YouTube, do all the YouTube stuff. Like, comment, and subscribe. Alternatively, check out the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Klidge. Get early access to all of this goodness. Early. That's what early access means. Uh, thank you to everybody who submitted stuff. I'm sorry that not everything made it in. Uh, I tried to get the ones that were primarily, like, hot take stuff. Uh, if you have your own hot takes that you would like to share with the community, you can leave those down in the comments as well. I would be, would be happy to read them. I think that's going to just about do us. So, for both YouTube and stream, thank you guys so much for hanging out. I'll catch you all later. Have a fantastic rest of your night, morning, evening. Good night, fellas. Bye bye Oh, Tammy's dead. Hold on. <laughs>